all surplus value, whatever particular form into which it may subsequently crystallize, is in substance the materialization of unpaid labor time. The secret of the self-valorization of capital resolves itself into the fact that it has at its disposal a definite quantity of the unpaid labor of other people. In this chapter, Marx is comparing his formula with that of classical political economists. Looking at their formula, we can observe a few things. Essentially, their formula makes it appear that both capital and labor are rewarded according to their contribution to production. By treating surplus value and the value of labor power as fractions of the total value, it ignores the rate of exploitation which occurs in production, making it appear as if both the capitalists and laborers get their fair share. This formula ignores the fact that the capitalist doesn't buy labor, they buy labor power. They buy the price of labor power at its value like any other commodity, but during that period that labor power is purchased for, the worker not only labors to the value of their labor power, but then they labor even more. Marx corrects the formula to which, Marx concludes, is essentially the popular expression and while this popular expression in its wording still confuses the difference between labor and labor power, it does highlight exactly why workers are hired to produce a surplus. Capital, therefore, is not only, as Adam Smith says, the command over labor, it is essentially the command over unpaid labor. <laughs>